Hello everyone, it just took me 30 minutes to find a freaking outfit and I still am like wearing like the basics. Um, I am going to like a plant and garden festival, a garden and art festival, jeez. It's called Sorta Culture and I am so excited to go. Like at first when I heard of it, I didn't know what it was and then I started like digging more and more into it and like the vendors and all of that and it just like hooked me and I was like okay we're going and I'm going with my boyfriend and his mom I am gonna try and record but of course I want to respect their privacy and um, I'm just gonna record a little snippet so I'm not gonna be like a full vlog you know but anyways yeah I'm really excited and I hope you guys enjoy this and I do have two plants in mind which you guys will see hopefully I get them hopefully they're still there if they're not I'm gonna cry but you guys will get to see all the excitement before I even get to experience it which I'm so sad but yeah I will see you guys there you guys enjoyed those clips i was kind of a little bit scared to record just because there was so many people like it was a lot bigger than i thought it was gonna be it was like at least three streets three blocks maybe i don't even know the measurement of blocks if i'm being quite honest <laughs> yeah so it was just really really full and going in i already knew i wanted to visit at least like three places which was floor nursery um predatory perennials and then um Fern Grotto, which Fern Grotto does like some really amazing terrariums. I actually did buy something from him, but it wasn't a terrarium. And I like the booths were also really, really small, so it was really hard to see stuff. I wish I got a footage of his stuff, but if you guys don't already follow Fern Grotto, he does some amazing builds. And like I just saw like some of his stuff, like here and there, that were sort of closer to the um, outside of the tent. And like literally amazing. I wish I got to, you know, see a little bit more, but going to this event i already sort of knew what i wanted i knew that i was gonna get some carnivorous plants at least two of those i did get one more plant which i didn't think i was gonna get i didn't even like process that i got this until like right now that i'm like staring at it, it is so pretty okay so yeah i'm gonna show you guys what i got i'm gonna start off with what i had mentioned before which was the carnivorous plants i got two carnivorous plants i got this uh Cape, Sun, Cape, Cape Dracera, Cape Sundew, uh, a sundew. Anyways, um, it doesn't really have the like dew drops on it. This is actually really, really dry. But yeah, they had, I believe it actually says, yeah, I got this from Courting Frogs Nursery. Um, and it was between this one and one that was just fully green. Like it didn't have the like, it didn't have the like red little hairs. But yeah, most of them. From what i could see didn't have the dew drops on it like this one i think over time from like people grabbing them and stuff it could also just lose it but i'm really happy that i got this one and then the next one that i got this one was from predatory perennials i got this pinguicula per pirouette pirouette and it is just so pretty like so you guys can't even like this lighting isn't really good either so it doesn't do it justice but yeah i'm really really happy to have these and these two i am gonna put together in a little terrarium so we'll get into that and then from fern grotto i got this maiden hair fern this isn't for me i got this for my boyfriend's mom because she tends to overwater her plants and i feel like honestly if you don't have a maiden hair fern get one because maiden hair ferns are I have been like whenever people ask me like what the easiest plant is I always say Calathea because my Calathea Worship Wixii has given me such a good experience with Calatheas. I think this is on that list as well like if someone were to ask me what an easy plant is this one I think I asked one like other shop if they had it and they were like no we don't really have the humidity for it but I haven't noticed that my fern is really like fussy about the humidity None of my leaves are really crisp, and if they do, it's because I underwatered it a little bit. Because literally, as soon as this dries out, you need to put 
like you need to refill that reservoir you need to water it again because it is just going to shrivel up and look ugly and so i got her this one which this was for ten dollars look at how full this thing is i love made in hair ferns if you do not have one get one and put it in a no drainage vessel with a lucka reservoir you are set for life i promise you like you're 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 so good the last plant that i got which was also unexpected um I got a Syningia Leucotrica, which this one I didn't purchase with my own money. Actually, these two together were a gift from my boyfriend's mom. They were a late birthday gift, um, which I'm so grateful for. Um, I cannot. This one is also from Courting Frogs Nursery, and you guys, um, if you watched Unplant Parenthood's video on her like favorite textured plants, this was on there. I can verify everything she has said. It feels like a dog's ear and oh my god i am just so happy to have this and um the courting frogs nursery actually gave me a lot of information about this plant of course i sort of assumed that it liked to dry out and then also um it's in the like african violet family the first one that i grabbed was like it had like kind of how like charmaine's is it just has like the four like leaves and it just has one stalk and then i saw this one and i was like i'm taking this home i love the flowers on this it is still a little wet because it is raining here so yeah it's a little bit wet but it's okay but i'm so happy to have this um i do want to take this out right now because i feel like it it could be a little bit too wet for my condition so i kind of want to refresh the soil add a lot of add a lot more perlite in there because i don't really know obviously they're a nursery so they could be growing this in conditions that allow the plant to dry out before it like festers or whatever so i kind of just want to get in there and switch it to something that i like and predatory perennials actually gives you like everything that you need to know about this plant which they actually have this on their like Instagram so I already read most of this but it's good to have like a copy on hand which is really really cool predatory perennials I literally followed instantly after I saw because like I went through like the vendor list here I'm gonna actually get set up to repot them so yeah when I was looking through the vendor list ooh, what do I want to do first I think I'll do this one the made in here friend just because I've already done this before I know what I'm doing and so I can kind of just chat through this I have two vessels for this one I don't know I'm leaning more towards this one but the only reason I don't like this one is because it's really shallow and with my friend I've noticed that the deeper the better because then you can have a bigger reservoir so maybe this one but then I'm also thinking about this one for the terrarium man oh man I don't know what to do Okay, so I wanted to try and use this piece of ghost wood for the terrarium. Don't think that's gonna happen though. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this one for the uh, fern. So, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was looking at the vendor list and I saw that um, I like literally read every single one. I clicked on every single one that like sort of made me wonder or like not necessarily wonder but like it made me curious about what it is and so um floor nursery was one like i said before but predatory perennials from the second that i saw that type like that name i was like okay i have to i need to like look into them because i feel like they're gonna be exactly what i want i wanted pings and i wanted i honestly wish i got another one because i feel like with just two carnivorous plants it might look weird um and i don't really have a lot of like moss or anything to put in there i do have some sphagnum moss but it's not enough to where i'm like for sure uh comfortable with like putting it on there i'm still gonna try so that'll also be fun to like move around my oh my god this thing is happy and so yeah predatory perennials i I wish they actually have like a storefront because I think I would be there forever like constantly looking at the pings and stuff because that is just so freaking cool to me. But yeah, like I was saying before, Calathea, I don't know, every time I, f every time I hear someone like ask me like, oh, what's, what's a good plant for this or this, I try to think like out of the ordinary, like something that, you know, you wouldn't really see or hear anywhere else. And so... 
like I've had people come into like this the plant store that I work at and they are like oh like what's this like what's the easiest plant my first thought is literally I promise you I have said this to people I think I've said this to like at least three people that calatheas are one of the easiest plants like not and I don't want to like trick someone into like getting not trick but like I don't want to convince someone into getting a calathea and then they just get like the wrong calathea because here I'll actually show you guys mine I have had so much success with this uh calathea worship XCI. literally the best experience that I've had with a calathea and that was my first calathea as well so I think that ooh. but yeah that was my first calathea and I have honestly had nothing but good experiences from that calathea and i feel like the trick to calatheas is don't get the leathery leafed ones get the velvet leaf ones like get like the i think it's like the zebrina and then the worshipwixii just don't get the leathery leaf ones i feel like those are the ones that tend to struggle with like hold on those are the calatheas that tend to struggle with like the crisping and like the humidity or whatever this plant i feel like i've let it dry out to the point where it's been like wilty and it's bounced right back like it it hasn't really had any issues besides um one time that i got like stem rot my point being that i always like to recommend stuff that you know you're never really gonna see i think i already said that um and i think that you know maiden hair ferns are kind of have kind of made it onto that list for me like a plant that I would recommend to someone that's just like you wouldn't really hear it anywhere else and I feel like a lot of people just like kind of make uneducated guesses for like what's wrong with their plant or whatever um because I feel like I don't know for me personally I don't necessarily put humidity at the top of my like priority list for like plant care or whatever it's not prioritized like i said but um maybe i shouldn't have put so much perlite in this i'm not sure where she's gonna keep this so i wanted to put some more like perlite in there so that it would like kind of dry out a little bit more but i don't know if that was a good idea because then it's like this might be too perlite heavy but um hopefully it's not yeah i think maiden hair ferns might be on that list as well because honestly it's been a dream like i i don't think i've had any issues with my maiden hair ferns and any issues that i did have were my own fault for like not um watering it enough it's not that the plant isn't like happy i think the one thing that i will say is that it might give you some smaller leaves if you don't have it in a good like humidity but i don't know that to be true quite yet because i have been repotting it quite a bit just because i haven't figured out what i like it in or like if it'll look good in this or that you know but um so yeah don't don't quote me on that because i'm not really sure i'm sure like during the summer i'll see really like if it truly likes it here but as of right now the maiden hair fern is one of my easiest plants which is like really weird to say but i think the key for me has been putting it in a why am i so out of the center sorry you guys um putting it in a no drainage vessel with a really deep like a reservoir so that as not really deep like if if this vessel let me i'd probably go like a little bit deeper probably like this much below um like have that fully be a, like a reservoir for the most part my maiden hair fern has been a dream for me if you are thinking about getting one literally just put it in this setup and you will be golden give it enough light so that it uses that up and you're set like you're honestly set you won't even need to repot it and i actually repotted mine the other day because i moved it into another vessel and then i didn't end up liking it in that vessel just because i had a feeling it would dry out too much and so i was like this isn't gonna work i'm just gonna move you right now and so i did that so definitely don't put in anything too shallow that's one reason why i'm kind of like iffy on this one but i think it's all set all right so this is the setup and i honestly thought that this cup this cup <laughs> i thought that this vessel would look a little bit weird because 
I, I don't know, I just don't like using these like old candle jars because it's just a really weird like shape, but this plant, I feel like actually fits it really, really well. Oh my God, I love made hair ferns. They're so freaking pretty. Okay, next. Oh God. <sighs> okay, let's do the Synergia. Just because I kind of want to save the best for last. And that being the terrarium, which we'll get into that. But this is my Synergia Lubricica. I feel like I can get closer. Hear me, Beal? For this one, I'm not exactly sure what I want to put it in yet. I was thinking maybe this vessel, but I don't know if no drainage would be the answer for this one. And the only reason I'm kind of thinking it might be is that I won't, they don't need a lot of water. And so I just don't oversaturate the soil, but like, I don't know. It also kind of makes me nervous. Oh, you guys shut the front door. Do I do it? Oh. God, we'll see. I feel like I have to see what the roots are. I have like so many vessels out here in front of me. I have these two. This one was the one that I had my, um, what's the name? Stefania Suburosa in. And, um, and I decided to move it just because I felt like I was kind of underwatering it a little bit. And so I moved it into something that I felt a little bit more comfortable in, which was drainage holes. Um, but I feel like this could also look good, but this might look really like top heavy. I feel like I just have to see the roots. Let's let's just unpot it. And I'm kind of really nervous. Oh, I forgot to put myco. I think I'll just sprinkle it on top. Every time I forget to put myco in my plants when I repot them, I literally have just started to sprinkle it on top because it's the same thing, sort of. Like the myco is gonna make contact contact with the roots at some point. But you know, I could have just made it easier by putting it on the roots, you know? Okay. Oh my God, that one looks so pretty. Okay. I was honestly not expecting to get this one whatsoever. Like I saw it and then I was like, there's no way. And then I picked it up, I looked at the tag and I was like, oh my God. Like I cannot believe that this is right in front of me. And yeah, if you guys have one of these, let me know how you've been caring for it. The person who like, um, I did my payment through was telling me that these kind of like to drip well obviously it's kind of i don't like saying obviously in my videos because it sounds really like ugh, you know like i am a know-it-all but by the structure of this plant you can sort of tell that it likes to dry out a little bit not a little bit it likes to dry out what am i saying and so um she was kind of i don't know if it's a good idea to even repot this right now because it's um flowering oh my god that is that's a thumbnail right there that's the thumbnail right there. Okay, whatever. I I don't want to leave this in here and then it just does horribly, but also why is it so dang hard to get out? Oh my God. Okay. Come on. I don't know what to do. Can I just like... I don't want it to fall, that's the only thing. Okay, got him. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. These vessels are way too small. Way too small. Can you guys see that? Look at all of these roots. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Do I have any other vessels that I would like to see this in? I severely underestimated that root mass. And so now I'm kind of just like backtracking. That's not gonna fit in there. Okay. I, I would honestly even go to say that this needs to be sized up, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't hate me, please. I'm kind of overwhelmed just kind of if I'm being honest I'm just pulling out all the vessels aren't I <laughs> so if I can I wouldn't mind moving around the root system a little bit to get it into this cuz oh, 
god that makes me just want to do it so bad just like looking at that together or or we do a non-invasive side of it and we put it in here which also like the peachy flowers oh my god such good picks you guys oh. okay because i definitely don't think it's gonna fit in here especially for the cup that i'm gonna have to use for this so i'd rather leave my gaius alone i'm kind of really really leaning towards this one just because i've been dying for another bamboo planter moment and i feel like this could be the perfect one so oh but this one also would look really really good i got dirt all over this yeah i think we're gonna go with a little bit of the invasive side of things this plant i think is gonna be one of my favorite plants i love that i love that i'm like in a moment in my like Ooh, that was not good I, I love that i'm in the like part of my houseplant journey where i am kind of like comfortable with how i'm growing like i'm i feel really content with my knowledge with you know my survivability of like the plants that i bring in i guess and i just feel confident enough to care for a lot of stuff and so i'm kind of just like exploring the plants that you know me like when i was first starting out that i really really wanted but i know that if i would have gotten those plants when i first started those things would have been dead by now like i i would have just killed them and i feel like that's also why it's a good thing to like start off with those beginner plants so that you're not killing plants that are literally going to hurt your heart like they like if i would have gotten a maiden hair fern when i first started that thing would have been neglected it would have been literally dead by now like I, I promise you every plant that i had when i first started is dead by now um i started off with like a um what is it called uh aglonema a uh, monstera and then a neon pothos and from there i sort of neon pothos uh golden pothos there we go and so from there i've i've literally just like went like head straight into or nose dived into the hobby and uh, it just makes me so happy i'm happy that i'm in this part of my um houseplant journey that i can sort of explore those more rare plants or those more like uncommon plants like this plant oh my god you guys i have been i never thought i would have this plant it like it wasn't even on it wasn't even on my wish list that's how much i was like i'm not gonna like it's it's never gonna happen but i have it and oh my god if you guys by the way i don't know if i finished saying this i kind of just feel like i'm all over the place right now so i'm sorry if i'm like scrambling but charmaine was so right about this plant so completely right also this was twenty dollars i don't know if i said that but yeah this this plant was a steal or yeah this one was twenty dollars so the first one that i grabbed was actually 15 but for five more dollars like mm, i i will take that any day my boyfriend got me a peperomia for my birthday last year and that plant um ended up getting overwatered throughout the winter and it, i just kind of didn't have it in enough light and i was still watering it as if it was still like getting enough light and so that plant is dead and like knowing that knowing that i killed a gift kind of just like really it hits the spot and not in a good way like it just it just really feels crappy and shitty but yeah, so now being in, you know, the part of the hobby where I can make those gifts survive, I have the ability and the knowledge to just, like, know that I am going to make a plant survive no matter what. Like, it just feels really good because the gifts just mean so much more. Like, I, I can... Like, you know when you get a plant and you're like uneasy about it like you know like oh this might die or like i don't i don't know how to take care of this it you know it this is not good 
I feel like I feel like now like I used to feel that way a lot about all of the plants that I got like really uneasy really like oh god am I gonna kill this now I feel like really really confident in the plants that I'm getting because well honestly it's because of one main thing it's just because of how I look at the plants like the structure of them that really helps me understand how to take care of them like this has a really big bulb at the bottom holds water really thick leaves um they're not too thick I honestly thought they would be thicker kind of like um it's an outdoor plant and it's really really it's like a silver plant that's outdoor and it's really really furry like this one I don't remember what it's called if I find a picture I'll put it in I kind of thought it would feel like that but it, it actually doesn't but it is a lot softer than that one so I'll take it but it makes me happy that I am able to make these plants survive especially the gifts the gifts definitely like my Florida Beauty was a gift and I honestly have just been loving watching that grow because I I don't know it just makes me feel really good about myself really good about like how I'm growing my plants and really good about my ability to care for these plants and just really it's a confident if it's it's a confidence booster <laughs> that's what I was trying to say so yeah it just oh my gosh I am so I'm still like processing that this is even in my collection right now so it's kind of is this gonna fit I'm kind of just trying to like push the roots out so that I can get it a lot more flat. I don't even know how big this bulb is either if I'm being honest. I feel so bad. I'm, oh my god, I feel, I hate doing this now. Another thing that I've really been trying to do lately is not mess with my plant's roots as much because they're, they're happy without you, like you don't need to be really invasive when you repot and that's something that I'm really trying to learn and like that doesn't mean that I'm not invasive if I feel confident enough or if I feel like the plant needs it I will be invasive like right now the only reason I'm doing this is because I want it to look good and this might sound like messed up but my plants need to look good for me to care for them and it's it's just a sad truth if this plant were in like the ugliest pot actually no i think i would still take care of this one just because of the plant that it is but like pairing it up with design or like with a cute pot or with the no drainage vessel is exactly what boosts me to want to take care of it even more and i haven't really talked about this a lot but i think i said this in one of my older videos my plants just have to look aesthetically pleasing if not i just am not going to be motivated to take care of it i'm not going to be motivated to oh my god there's so many roots i'm sorry i'm really trying to be careful i just kind of want to get these roots flat but yeah for the most part i've really been trying to just let my plants be let them be the heck alone and i feel like that's one thing that my fry deck has taught me my fry deck um was on the struggle bus before and now ever since i've just kind of left it alone i you know i saw that it was doing really good and then i was like okay i'm just gonna let it be for now i'm not even going to unpot this again guys this thing has so many roots i didn't think it was gonna be this freaking rooted it, i was literally picking like vessels for like two inch roots and just because I I don't like being invasive, like I used to be really freaking invasive and I would like unpot my plants like every other week just to see if they were doing okay, which is one thing that no drainage has helped me with is like being able to see the roots is definitely better than not being able to see the roots because me not being able to see the roots makes me unsure if I'm able to care for the plant, which now I know like I, I I know I can take care of a plant without um, no drainage or like a clear vessel but um, in the beginning that's one thing that I really really struggled with was like seeing the roots I visibly needed to see that my plant was doing okay and it didn't matter if the leaves looked fine or if the foliage was okay like if oh my god I hate myself right now I think I'm done this is like hurting me 
Oh my god, this is gonna look so cute. I think what I might do is kind of just like mound the um, soil over so that the roots aren't just like peering out of the bottom. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm not mad at that at all. Someone better remind me to put in freaking myco on this plant. Which, actually, my boss, we like talk to our customers about like what's in our soil mixture at any time that they like are interested in what they have or like anytime someone asks a question, we kind of give a little bit more information on what those soils have. And so one of the soils had like for outdoor, well, outdoor, indoor, but you know, you know what I mean, outdoor. And, oh wait, why did I put that much? Jeez. And so one of those soils had myco in it and he was like talking to the customer and he was like saying that he wouldn't advise to use myco for indoors, which I don't, I don't know why. To be honest, like I've like anytime I think back to like that, I always, I'm always like, why, why, like, why is Michael bad for indoors? Um, and so I actually like asked uh, Chat GPT, which I have been using pretty often to be honest. Mostly just like things that I don't want to search for on Google, because anytime I you know ask Google something, it's always like a hundred things pop up with like three different answers, and I just don't really have the time for that, so I just don't. I don't like going through all that but you know after i heard that i think yesterday I actually did this i asked chat gpt like why is myco bad for indoors like why wouldn't people use it for indoors and it was saying like okay it said here limited root space indoor house plants are typically grown in containers with limited root space mycorrhizal fungi establish a symbiotic relationship with plant roots extending their reach and helping the plant absorb nutrients and water from the soil However, if in a confined um, container, it won't really have the ability to do that because um, there's limited soil space down below. And then it said controlled environments, indoor environments are often carefully controlled to provide optimal conditions for houseplants, including temperature, humidity, and lighting. These controlled conditions reduce the need for the plants to develop extensions, extensive root systems. Um, to search for nutrients and if they're really available from growing they won't really need they won't really create that symbiotic relationship with the myco and then the third one which just didn't really make sense so i was just like okay uh sterile potting mixes they don't include the mycorrhizae in there so it's not even gonna have the mycorrhizae to begin with but it's like uh, the i can buy mycorrhizae and put it in there so that don't really make sense but last one was low nutrient availability indoor house plants are typically provided with regular fertilization to receive adequate nutrients, this supplementation can minimize the need for mycorrhizae to enhance nutrient uptake as the plants already have access to readily available nutrient source, which isn't necessarily true because a lot of the time people aren't really checking their pH, so we don't know that 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 those nutrients are like readily available. We can assume that they are, but how do we really know unless the person is checking their pH? Um, so like if you don't really want to ph test myco i feel like would be a good option and everything that it kind of said was just like okay like that's not really a valid point but okay um like the um not having the myco in there i was just like okay i can buy myco i can put it in there but i'm not like bashing chat gpt or anything but i'm just saying like um i still don't fully understand why myco would be you know why you wouldn't use my go indoors i don't know maybe i should just ask him but i haven't even thought to ask him just because i'm still like confused a bit about it and with my um at my job we tend to tell people like oh yeah you know don't don't grow in drainage holes or what oh my god we tend to tell people like you know make sure your pot has drainage holes you know it allows for a lot of aeration like we tell them a lot of things and then i kind of grow opposite from what we say so i feel like it's hard for me to want to talk about how i grow or like want to spark a conversation just because i don't know if it'll be taken well or if it'll be like oh like you're growing horribly like that's so bad or whatever um kind of want to spray this and i forgot my go i blame you guys on that one because i told you to remind me no, I'm totally joking. 
don't take it to heart okay so i just sprayed it down on the top because i don't want any of the uh, substrate to come like crashing down and i do want to do a little bit more research on this plant just so that i'm making sure i got all the information i need to be successful with this um but for the most part i can kind of assume that i'm not going to be watering this a lot um gonna let it dry out you guys i love this i love this so much i'll probably insert a b-roll of this so you guys can get the complete oh my god this is such a perfect plant like a perfect fit to this i love it i still don't know what vessel i want to use i kind of like this one to be honest just because i've been dying to use it the only thing that i'm really worried about is mold i don't know i'm not sure that it's like teak wood so i don't know if it's like and even teak wood can rot sometimes so i don't know i just i don't know i don't feel fully confident in using this one just because i feel like it could be a bad idea but <laughs> the other one that i was thinking was this one or we like go full on like terrarium and we use like these type of vessels and then the other like squared one that you guys saw i wouldn't mind this one either just because i've been dying to use this one as well i keep having issues with plants not liking this vessel just because i've found that with vessels with certain vessels i will feel like really uncomfortable to like or really like on edge i guess to like check on the plant or take it out with this one specifically i definitely was like i did not want to check up on it because i can't pull the plant out or else all of the freaking um substrate will fall out so i just kind of left it in there until the plant would start to show me signs like my um mykins was in this one absolutely did not like it and i just haven't really found a comfortable I don't know, I just haven't found a plant that will go in here and I will feel comfortable enough to actually care for it and not neglect it. And so with these, since they're carnivorous, I feel like it might work out a little bit better. Which, I know that the pinguicula goes through like a, um, what's the word? It goes through a like succulent cycle. Like, I'm not sure if the pinguicula needs constant water, but from what I've seen like with Benji plant and stuff, of course I'm gonna do my, re my research. Of course I'm gonna do my research before I like actually go into like the full on care of it. But yeah, that's just sort of where I'm kind of stuck on. But yeah, I wouldn't mind it in this. I feel like it would be really cute. And with the wood one, I already did the uh, syningia. I was supposed to say pinguicula. <laughs> I already did the syningia in my, um, what you call it in my like bamboo teakwood bowls so i think i'm gonna go with this one and hopefully i don't regret it what if i think just for aesthetics sake i'm just gonna pop them straight in here and i am gonna do a little leka layer at the bottom okay i got some more leka i think this might be too much but i'm set some aside just in case this is my rainwater i'm so happy that i had rainwater because i did not get distilled water so well i'm happy it rained first of all because that would have been horrible this doesn't have the like dews on it like the dew drops so i'm not too worried about repotting this but that doesn't make it any less nerve-wracking there we go oh wow the roots are actually really juicy i didn't think they were gonna be that um Thick, if i'm being honest i thought they would have been more like hair hairline kind of like ferns but i mean it's still a pretty small root system so it's not it's not anything too big but it's definitely more than i expected like the hairs are really really thick or the hairs the roots <laughs> the ping i'm a little bit more nervous about maybe i'll repot it in this one just to make sure just in case they have like any different soil needs actually what am i doing there we go okay just in case they have different soil needs or something like that i want to why am i being so extra i want to make sure that i get them down and this one does have the dew drops on it and i honestly would have gotten more but the smaller ones were just as expensive as the bigger ones so i was like i don't okay this has a lot of vermiculite 
I'm not worried about getting the roots out as long as I can sort of see where they are. I am perfectly okay with that. I want to do soil. I think I will do soil and then I'll shoot. But I wanted to... I'll do soil and then I'll cover it with sphagnum moss. I'm not sure if you can overwater these. Oh, there's live moss. What a score. I'm sorry if I'm not talking. It's just kind of because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm trying to figure it out. This is not what I envisioned whatsoever, but it's working out. So I'm, I'm not complaining. Both of these kind of have shallow root systems, so I'm not worried about... I'm like too busy to talk, but I want to talk. They have shallow root systems, but they like to stay wet. So I'm not worried about like over potting these. There is a lot of leca in here, like almost to the brim. So I'm not even, this does not look right. <laughs> I think maybe with the moss, can you guys even see it? No, you can't. <laughs> I think with the moss, it might help, but it also could not help. So I don't, I don't even know. This already looks so, cute and i can't imagine or i can imagine it with with the uh, moss growing on the outside too i feel like it's gonna look so cute oh my god okay um the one thing that i am worried about is if this ping decides to go into a succulent stage i don't know if all pings need to if i do research and come to find out they do need to i might just move the ping into like a separate vessel just so that i'm not worried about the watering with this because that it's definitely a worry and i have been having some like fungus issues like fungus nut issues i mean but it's not anything too drastic, but I'm hoping that with this, they'll kind of draw more to this instead of, you know, flying right in front of my face. I also wish I would have asked them if this is a good, like, pair up, if it's okay to, like, put these together or not. Just because I could be making a big mistake here. If push comes to shove and I have to unpot these two, I'll just separate them. Like, it's not that big of a deal but I wish I would have asked them. Maybe I'll try and send them a message on Instagram. Also, a little update. Maybe I should take a picture of this before I chop it. But yes, my moss balls have been growing like wildfires. I don't know, I'm just so happy with the growth on these moss balls. So I don't know how to really do this. Can I just like... Oh, I guess I could just chop that. Oh. Oh my god, I'm so happy with this. His mom kept calling these my murderers. Oh my god, it's so cute, you guys. I love it. I love it. I'm so obsessed. I'm... I do wish that I got to use some of my like pieces of wood, but it just would have been too hectic and it, you know, I'll find a good use for those at some point. I am over the moon about this. Okay, so I finished putting all of the plants in their own dedicated spaces. Um, oh my god, sorry, I'm winded and I'm, I think I'm starting to get a headache, so it's just like a double whammy right now. Um, I found their designated spaces. I found where they're gonna stay for now. I think I might switch around some things here and there But for now, this is just sort of where I'm gonna keep them And so I'm gonna show you guys my boyfriend's mom's plant first because uh, This is mine right here Look at look at the difference, please. This was ten dollars. I think this one was like 15 maybe maybe a little less don't really remember but look at that oh my goodness usually i don't like these old bath and body works candle jars just because they're a really awkward shape like they're really short and then really like wide so it doesn't really it's hard to find something that fits them good i feel like if they were just a little bit taller it might not be as bad but 
because of their awkward size it's hard to find a plant that like truly looks good in them but yeah this this plant fits this vessel so well and i can't wait to give this to her because it is just so cute it is the cutest plant ever oh my god i wish you guys could like look at that canopy look at the way it like overlaps itself okay next one is my carnivorous plant what am i gonna call this my carnivorous plant arrangement there we go because it's not a terrarium it's really just an arrangement and i actually added a little frog my mom actually found this at like the goodwill bins don't ask me how because if you've been to the bins you know how crazy and hectic those things are like you cannot it's just i don't understand how she found it but she found this little frog my mom has made me fall in love with frogs also at the event i wish i filmed it oh my god um there was like metal sculptures there was like so many like different mediums of art there um people were making coca damas there was mounted like staghorn ferns mounted plants just like all around really good vibes really like beautiful art there and there was one uh, metal sculpture that was a frog that had like caught a fly on its tongue describing it now is kind of like it feels stupid to say but it was just so cute seeing it <laughs> and so yeah this is what my little oh my god you guys i'm so obsessed with this as soon as i put the frog in here as well it just like oh my god i love my frog if you didn't already do so definitely follow predatory perennials for in grotto um both of those people are just like amazing i loved their stuff everything i wish i got to look more at fern grotto stuff because i see his stuff on instagram and i just love it um i wish i also got to talk to him but i again it, the the booths were just too too tiny to really you know get a conversation in and i just kind of bought the maiden in here for and i was like okay i gotta go to the next one oh my god my poor freaking frog get your stuff together dude okay yeah I'm, I'm done dropping that freaking frog so i actually ended up having to move the sundew and the pinguicula out of that plant arrangement although it really really pained me to move them out i it's definitely for the better i don't regret moving them out now i have my pinguicula in this cute little uh thrifted planter that i got and then my sundew is in a no drainage vessel for the most part in this area of my plant shelf there is no fungus gnats and so there is barely like any thing on this pinguicula so maybe i just have to buy it food or something lastly is my syningia leucotrica all right here is this beauty it speaks for itself really i love this so much like it this plant in general i i was not expecting to find this whatsoever like as i said before this is a plant that i never thought i would own and now that i do i am amazed you guys i honestly want to bite this like <laughs> having it in front of my face is such a like like intrusive thoughts will win if i have this close to my face so let me not do that oh my god but yeah, this is such a beautiful plant. Um, I'm excited to see how this grows in my collection, to be honest. I've done pretty okay with like my uh, Stefania Suberosa. I know this isn't like exactly the same thing, but uh, I feel like that, that one kind of has like similar components to this one. They both kind of are like codex e plants. Would you consider this a codex plant? I'm not really sure but they both kind of have the same formation, I guess. This plant is just amazing. If you are like a sensory person, if you are like a touchy, like you love sensations, sensations? If you love, what am I trying to say? If you like the feeling of things, if you like, if you are a texture type of guy, type of girl, type of gal, whatever, this, this, this is, this is the one. If you've been wanting this, i recommend you get it you guys i honestly thought these were like expensive plants as well like i didn't think i was ever going to get this i thought that these were like maybe like 50 and upwards of that i got this for 20 bucks and that's kind of crazy those are all of the plants that i got i love everything that i got i got everything i wanted and more so love that 
that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this hopefully this inspired you guys to really look out into what's in your community and if you have the chance to go to one of these events similar to this in your area do it because i don't think you'll regret it it was honestly so much fun like just getting to see what people create and what people have to give to this world or like create as well it's just so beautiful and there were so many shops that i wish i could have just like sat there and stayed all day as far as this video goes i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope this inspired you guys to put together some amazing pieces of art pieces of living art i love plants and that love is just amplified when it's combined with something that i also love which is like design aesthetics like things like that is such a good feeling to like love everything around you and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching